Okay, well, given that x to the one-half power, namely square root of x, it's a solution to this differential equation, and we want to find the other one, so we can solve the differential equation. And remember, whenever we're given one solution and we're trying to find the other, we can try to use the reduction of water method, right? And also, at the end, we have to make sure the two solutions are linearly independent. Anyway, so let's get to work right here. And yes, I'm using a blue pen for now. We will be using the reduction of water. So let me put this down right here. And to do so, you know you're given y1, which is x to the one-half power. And I will label y2 to be our second solution right here. y2, you know, it's going to be a product of an unknown function. And usually, we'll just denote that by phi. It's a product of phi times, well, the given solution, which is x to the one-half power. So let me just put that down right here. And from here, what we'll do is, we just look at this and differentiate this twice because we have the second derivative here. And then plugging everything into here and then try to solve for the phi. Okay, so let's get to work. Let's do the first derivative for y2, which is going to be we have to use the product rule. Phi is a function of x as well, okay? So I will keep the first function, which is phi, and we multiply by the derivative of the second, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half power, right? Bring the power to the front and minus 1. And then we add it with the second function, which is x to the 1 half power times the derivative of the first, which is phi prime, just like this. And then, second derivative, y2 double prime, this is going to be, I'm going to use product rule again. And let me just look at this as the first function, and that will be my second function, okay? Right here, I will keep the first function, which is still phi, and we multiply by the derivative of the second. Bring the power to the front, we will have negative 1 over 4, right? Because 1 over 2 times negative 1 over 2, we have this. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent, so we get x to the negative 1 half, minus 1, which is negative 3 half, like this. So do it carefully. And then uh, we will add, we keep the second function, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half power, and we multiply by the derivative of the first, which is phi prime, like this, okay? And this is a negative 1 half power, okay? This right here is the derivative of that. And now we differentiate this. We have to add, once again, we have to use the product rule. I will keep the first function, which is x to the one-half power, multiplied by the derivative of the second, which is going to be phi double prime. And then we add it with the second function, which is phi prime, times the derivative of the first. You bring the power to the front, which is one-half, and then you subtract one from the exponent, which is x to the negative one-half power, just like this. And now we will just plug in the second derivative and also the original back to the original differential equation. So I'll begin by putting down this right here for you guys. We have the 4x squared, and then we have to multiply this by y double prime, which is all this, right? And when we put this down, let's take a closer look. Let me organize this in terms of the fees. I want to put down v double prime first, which is this term, okay? So let me write this down, which is x to the 1 half power times v double prime. Okay, that's the first term right here. And I want to put down the term that has the phi prime. Well, we notice that here we have the phi prime, right? And here we also have the phi prime. And also the x to the negative one half power they match. So in other words, these two are actually like terms. So what we have to do is one half plus one half, which is two over two, which is just one. So these two combine, you get plus, 1, and let me put down the x to the negative 1 half power first, which is this right here, okay? x to the negative 1 half right here, and we put down the phi prime at the end, okay? And for the last term, which is just this, let me put down the constant, which is negative 1 over 4, and then we multiply that by the x, which is x to the negative 3 half, and then we have the phi at the end, just like this, okay? And now we will add this with y. y is just that. And as I said, I will put down the phi at the end. So let me put down x to the one half power and then the phi at the end like this. And then all this is equal to zero, like that. 
Okay, so this is nice, and now I will just have to distribute the full x into here, here, and here. Just draw the arrow to make ourselves feel better, and then we will see what we get from here. Okay, so here we go. 4x squared times this. And you see, we just multiply the x squared and the x to the 1 half power. So we will have 4x, 2 plus 1 half, which is 5 over 2, right? So this is just 5 over 2. And then we keep the y, the phi double prime, sorry, phi double prime. And then we do this times that. So we have plus 4x. This is 2 minus 1 half. Well, this is the same as 4 over 2 minus 1 half, which is 3 half, like this. And then we have the phi prime right here. And this times that is minus 4 and 1 fourth cancel. And this is x to the second power. And this is x to the negative 3 over 2, right? So 2 minus 3 over 2. 4 over 2 minus 3 over 2, which is positive 1 half. So x to the 1 half. And then phi right here, right? So this is what we have after you distribute that. And then we have plus x to the 1 half power phi, and this is equal to 0. Small hint, whenever you're doing this kind of things, the terms with phi will cancel out. And you see right here, they do cancel each other out, right? So this term and that term, they cancel out. You're not going to be seeing phi once you clean these things up, all right? But yes, we'll still see the phi prime and phi double prime. But we can handle this much better. Anyway, this is what we have to solve now. We have 4x to the 5 half power v double prime plus 4x 3 half power v prime, which is equal to 0 now. Well, to solve this, what we are going to do is do a substitution. And I will say let w, because we used v earlier, I will let w equals to the first derivative of v, which is v prime. Because when we have this, this equation is going to be 4x to the 5 half power, and this v double prime is going to be w to the first power, or w prime, right? So w prime, and then plus 4, plus 4 right here, and then we have the x to the 3 half power, and this now is just w, and then this is equal to 0 now. And once we have this right here, you see this is actually a first order differential equation, right? And to solve this, I will use I will be using the integrating factor, all right? And what I want to do right here is I want to divide everything by this first, so I can tell you guys what p of x is. So if you forgot about the integrating factor, you should review the technique. But anyway. I'm going to divide everything by that. So let me just put this down right here in blue again. Hopefully you guys don't mind. 5 over 2 right here. Divide this by x, 4x to the 5 over 2. And of course, don't leave the 0 alone. So I will also divide the 0 by 4x to the 5 over 2 so that you can be legitimate. OK, so I'm going to just take this to here now. This and that will cancel. That's excellent. So we have w prime and 4 and 4 cancel so that's good so plus be careful with this this is x to the 3 half and then this is x to the 5 half so when you divide you get x to the negative 1 right which is the same as 1 over x okay this power minus that power you get negative 2 over 2 which is negative 1 that's the same as 1 over x to the first power and we put a w on the side and then this is equal to 0 over that, which is of course 0. And now, integrating factor. So I'll just put down integrating factor IF. You have to look at this right here. So mu of x is equal to E as the base integral, and then we have to integrate 1 over x, and that's positive 1 over x. So we have to do this. And remember, when you're doing integrating factor, Integral of 1 of x, yes, it's ln absolute value of x, but you don't have to worry about absolute value, right? And you don't have to put on plus d neither. This right here, all we care is just e to the ln x, that's all. Namely, you can see that canceled out already. All we need is just x. So, what does this do? This means I have to go back to this equation and multiply everything by x. So let me just put that down right here. 
And now, x times w prime we get just this, x w prime, plus x times this, which is just 1, doesn't matter, so I'll just put on w, and x times 0 is of course 0. And that's what we have. What's next? Well, the beauty of this is that on the left-hand side, this is going to be the derivative of x times w. You see? If I keep the first function, which is right here, I differentiate w, which is w prime, and then I add the second function, which is w, times the derivative of the first, which is 1, just like this, right? So you can merge this into the product, into the derivative of a product, just like this. So that's the beauty of using the integrating factor. And this is equal to 0. And now we can just integrate both sides with respect to x. So let's put on dx like this and like that. So that this and that will cancel. And now on the left-hand side, we'll just have x times w. And this is equal to integral of 0. It's just going to be a constant. However, I will use c for the final answer. So I will just use k1 right here for the constant, OK? And we can just divide by x on both sides. In another word, w will be k1 over x. And w, as we know, is v prime, right? So I'll change this to v prime. And this is equal to k1 over x. To solve for v, we can just integrate both sides with respect to x. And now on the left hand side, we have v. And this is equal to k1 is just a constant multiple, so we can just put that down first. And then integral of 1 over x now, if you want to put down ln absolute value of x right here, but now that's OK. But I claim that we don't need the absolute value. We can just put down a parentheses. Because if you look back to the given solution right here, this is just square root of x, isn't it? So you know x has to be greater than or equal to 0, we cannot have negative numbers inside of the square root. That's why we have this condition already. x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Furthermore, I actually don't need to have the equal sign here neither, because throughout our computations, as you can see, we divided by x a lot of times, right? For example, here, I cannot have x equal to 0. Otherwise, a lot of the computations right here that we did, it's not going to work. Based on this, again, we know x has to be positive, so we can just have ln parentheses x. We don't need the absolute value, OK? And another thing I want to mention is that we integrated both sides right here. Technically, I should put down plus another constant, so k2. But in fact, you don't need this k2 neither. But I will just leave it as how it is for now, right? Anyway, right here, this is our v. And don't forget, we have to multiply phi by x to the one half power to get y2. So here we will get y2 is equal to, this is the phi. I'll put down parentheses. Let me write down k1 ln parentheses x plus k2. And we multiply this by x to the one half power. So let me put this down right here. And of course, we can distribute this into here, right? So the first term is going to be k1 x to the 1 half power times ln parentheses x. And then this is just plus k2 x to the 1 half power. As you notice already, this is just a constant multiple of the first solution, right? That's why this is nothing new. You don't need this at all. This is a new function part that we care, right? x to the 1 half power times ln x. This is the new function part that we care. That's the new building block for our overall solution for that differential equation. So finally, I can write down the answer for you guys. Here is the answer. I will just write down y for you guys. So the first building block is x to the 1 half power for the solution. And then the second building block for the solution is this, which is x to the 1 half power ln x, like this, right? And as you know, <laughs> here's the usual deal. We just multiply this by c1, and we multiply this by c2, and then we add them together so we can get uh, the final answer. And this is it. OK? So this is the procedure by using the reduction of order to show how you can end up with the overall solution. 
As many of you guys noticed, this right here is in fact Cauchy Euler equation, right? So there's another way to do it, and you should watch my next video. I will show you guys how we can come up with a characteristic equation for that differential equation. And also, this right here will explain that what we will do whenever we end up with repeated root. And you see, in fact, we have to multiply by ln x. So be sure you watch my next video. And that's it.